looked at how to create uh, this sketch reference as a scanned PDF. What we're going to do in this one is just look at how we can quickly uh, mass this up or draw this up and we're going to be using the 3D design tools to do this. So we use our wall tool. I'm going to go into the settings and try to get that right or at least roughly right first. I'm going to use a solid fill. I don't really care about representing um, a particular wall material at this point. It's too early to do that. So I'm just going to leave this as 270. Therefore it could be something like cavity brick or it could be uh, some type of concrete in situ block, um, insulated concrete form, something like that. A lot of them will be based around the idea of 270. Uh, now, the height of this is important. We looked at this in a previous video. So what we want to do is make sure that it is linked. We're currently on ground floor, so we want to be linked to our first floor. And we might make that minus 300 or we might make that zero. We can always go back in and change the settings later if we're not happy with those. But for now, to keep it really simple, we'll do that. Now, this red line defines our boundary setback. So we're going to use that as the basis for what we're doing. And I'm going to be drawing around this shape in an anti-clockwise direction. Now, I know that this should be roughly 12. It looks like it's slightly bigger than that. That's fine. I'm just going to keep this as 12. And hopefully it all works itself out in the end. <clears throat> and I know that each one of these um, apartments or buildings should be each around um, 9 metres each, the whole thing being a total of 36. So I'm just going to make this wholly 36. We see that the scale is a bit off. So I scaled this up based on the perimeter of the site, but maybe I actually need to reduce the scale based on the, um, the individual block sizes. So there we go. That's roughly the size. Now I might do that now. We, we see that we don't really have an ability to re-change the scale in this drawing. So let's just go back and fix this where it was. I may have just used the wrong one as well because uh, I've just copied this twice. So cut that and we'll place it back on our ground floor plan and we'll resize it here now that we've got an actual uh, numerical reference again I'm going to use define graphically click find that reference point, it's roughly here, we can't be exact in this sort of case click so we see that the site's slightly wrong now, but our building is, is right. And because we're not going to be tracing the site, but tracing the building, it makes more sense to get that correct. Cut from here again and place this back onto the worksheets. Original location. Back to ground floor again. And so now we can see it, it's gone back to blue. And we can copy this line. So, sorry, this wall. So I'm going to drag a copy or I could drag multiple copies and I'm going to drag this across 9 meters 18 27 now theoretically uh, if I was going to set this out properly because it's a larger site, I probably wouldn't have the walls with the reference line on the side. I'd probably have the walls with the reference line in the middle. But right now, that's unnecessary. The reality is that if I was to eventually model this up better in Archicad, I wouldn't be modeling all four projects, but exactly, particularly if they're exactly the same, that would just be duplicating the potential of errors and duplicating the amount of work I need to do. Instead, I just would model one and then I'd use the module option, file, external content, um, and use our module manager to import one apartment and then multiply it from there. So that would be the faster way of working. Now the rest I could add lines in uh, or I could add more walls in. What I was suggesting here is the idea that maybe it's broken up down the middle somewhere. Maybe that's five and a half meters, maybe that's six. Let's just say 5, 7 for now. 
And the idea here is that these are actually all open in the basement level. Before I cut those, however, we'll select these lines. Keep calling them lines. I've been doing 2D projection in ArchiCAD for too long. Edit, copy these walls and pasting them onto the individual stories that we might be working with. So in this case, we'll be working with ground, first, and basement. And then once we're in the basement, we're going to be deleting those ones. Again, massing, I'm doing them all rather than doing each individual file. Once I get to the next stage, I won't do that. Uh, and now let's turn that trace back on. Show as trace. I've got a couple cars. I represent those as triangles because it's a lot easier to draw a triangle. Let's use a car object in ArchiCAD. I could use a 2D symbol uh, so I could get a 2D car. Sorry, it's a bit small window because I'm projecting, so it's um, reducing the scale. Or I could go to visualization and use a 3D car. Yeah. Now we don't necessarily need this wall here. Obviously, this it's making it quite tight. Um, the reality is that we wouldn't actually have that. It'd be more like this. So I'll just drag a copy of two of those, maybe. Now, of course, that's a bit tight on that side. Now that this is in ArchiCAD, I might want to start to add in a bit more detail to make this sure, make sure this works. And of course, I chose a very large car there. So if I was to choose a small car, I could choose a very, very small car or um, something a bit more normal. Let's use this one. Then we'd see that there's actually a lot of space there. So how would we represent this? I'm just going to use a line tool in this case uh, and offset this and I'm going to use 2500 and copy that again. So we could get away with a car space of two and a half meters. Of course, it's a lot easier to do that when you don't have a wall. As soon as you add a wall in, uh, it really makes it harder. So that's why I've squished this one over to the side a bit. We could be more generous, but we're just going to start with that because that shows our minimum. And then we need to allow for, let's put our trace back on. We need to allow for a staircase and a laundry space and maybe some storage area here. Then of course these are all repeated so I'm not going to multiply these, that would be dumb. What I've done in this case for the sketch is I represented the basement on this one, the ground floor on this one, and then the first floor on this one. Of course I don't need to do that. So what I could do is now go up to my ground floor and in this case I could drag my reference that from there so now I can see what I was talking about with that plan so I'm just going to use this uh, left unit and then for the first floor I could do the same sort of thing and drag my reference from here across to here so that would allow me again to sort of do the same thing and, and to add those up. Now I'm not going to worry too much about this now. Um, hopefully you get the idea of what we're trying to do. The intention is we'll trace that out. We can add in some additional walls just to rough this up. I'm probably going to reduce the size of these walls maybe to something like 110 just for a, a bedroom wall. And I could draw it directly over that. Um, or what I could do if I wanted to would be to draw that here and then move it across how far maybe four meters would be fine for the internal of course I have to remember that there's going to be a staircase there as well so maybe I, I need to move in a meter maybe a bit more maybe 1100 for my staircase 
and then from there maybe I want to move across something like that and that maybe that's where my position of my bedroom is or because it's so long maybe it doesn't need to be quite so wide so maybe I could move back a meter so again is this space planning maybe uh, what I would normally define it as is we've already done our space planning but now we're starting to try to get a little bit firmer details uh, so we're testing we're using Archicad to test our design ideas to make sure that they're working so then we can um, be a bit more confident with our space planning moving forward to the next stage let's just make this a 3x3 three three bedroom just to make it nice and small at the moment So we see that's a lot of room. So maybe we could add an additional 600, or I'll just drag a copy. So maybe I've put a, a robe on one side or a robe on both sides. Now we're going to see that's maybe making the bathroom too small. So maybe having the bedroom, bathroom, bedroom is not going to work as well in the middle as I intended. So maybe instead we do the bathroom on one side and then the bedrooms in between. So we can see that this is working for our, our ability to do testing. It's helping us to understand what we want to do. So let's just delete these and do that again. Now we'll move that across three. And maybe what we're saying here is that we'll take that wall and divide that in half and put a robe on both sides so it effectively does that now just for again roughing it in I'm not going to be worried too much about detail so I'm just going to show a line to represent that robe so now I've got bedroom, bedroom, bath staircase which obviously doesn't need to be this long um, and then a master bedroom here so I'd probably try to configure a ensuite into this space and then I've got enough room to have my courtyard downstairs and then another maybe rooftop terrace upstairs with um, a landing or a foyer or maybe a, a sitting space coming off the top. Of course I've got so much width here I could make this deeper so I could add an additional meter to make these rooms more generous. How do I do this? I could do it in a few ways. Um, maybe move it 500 and then stretch both ways. So yeah, we're still sort of massing, but we're taking a little bit more detail than that now. And we're starting to test. We're starting to test our room spaces and our sizes to make sure that's working. And then we can always toggle on, toggle off our trace reference just to make sure that that's working with what we want. Now when we're happy with how that's working, we can of course drag that back and try to do the same with our ground floor plan. So probably in this case understand where that wall was. That might be important for the story below uh, for a courtyard. So we were thinking here of doing something like a staircase and then a dining room with a courtyard outside. Maybe we need to make that a little bit bigger but upstairs we could also of course offset this a meter or whatever and make that a veranda outside this bedroom uh, and therefore that's creating a bit of a, a shading for the, the floor below again I don't want to get too much into the design configurations of this it's really just to understand how to do it in Archicad <laughs>